Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, again, keep getting interrupted here. And okay, so we're back to the baby boy and experiences, chips, etc. These are strong tasting foods and can have strong effects on the body. So interesting. I mean, just right away off the top of my head again, feeding something that doesn't even taste good, having to figure out how to get your kid to eat it these supplements that you could spend a lot of money on and then your kid won't even take it. So what do you do? Okay. So this one, actually, I think there's only one reply so far and, um, she, Kate has been giving, oh no, this is the same thing. No, no, no. Okay. Not sure when I'll be comfortable with fermented food, but I think it's soon for my nine month old. So, no real, um, no real responses on those. Then the last one I'm going to talk about here on their side is, uh, let's see, Kirk Terrell, uh, fermenting regularly, move from the East Coast to the West Coast, gum on the surface. This is talking about kombucha, much like when making stock, blah, 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 airtight, clean wrap. Know how frustrating it can be. I hope you found some answers by now. I'm not an expert at all, as I just started Kiefer, but it, the East is much colder than the West. Could it simply be temperature? No, no answers yet. Feel a little discouraged to try again. I mean, you're wasting time. You're wasting money. Your confidence is taking a beating because you're not able to do something. Hey, let me help you out. This is rotting food. You don't want to eat it. You want to eat life-giving foods that don't have extra... You know, I mean, you can get sugar, a good sugar again, if you need sugar for carbs and you're adding it because, you know, you need, need those carbs in or something, then, you know, that can balance out and round out your carbohydrate intake a little bit. But whenever you're adding loads of all this salt and cabbage, it's so expensive, so it won't feel like a waste if it doesn't ferment properly. And it's just a mess, you know, and it's like the... the Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And so, I mean, why, Duchess? Why are you doing this to yourselves? Why are you wasting all this time, all of this money, and you can't get it right? And the thread literally says again and again and again, you know. So, just kind of a little bit saddening to me. Now, there is a, another board on mothering.com, and it would be a vegetarian board and a vegan board. It's, they kind of put them together here. So, that's what we have. Now, some of the topics that we have. We do have some cold lunch ideas for a newly picky vegetarian kit. So these, you know, this might be an issue, it might be a little impractical and I'm being completely objective and honest here. You know, I'm not going to like sugarcoat this and only say the good stuff and leave out the bad stuff. Cause you can just go, and the whole purpose of this is so that you can go look for yourself. So this is just what I'm seeing cold lunch ideas, you know, for a picky kid. So if there's picky kids, that could be a downside to going on this diet, but, um, they're also probably focusing on like, um, vegetables usually with fruits um usually obviously not all the time but usually it's not that hard to get kids to eat fruit to get them in the habit of drinking smoothies for breakfast or something like that and especially great for cold lunch too um and i'm gonna have to respond on this you know, because they've got all these ideas hummus, pretzel sticks plain yogurt you know and it's obviously a vegetarian person and as are most of the people who are you know responding and um you know i think the emphasis should be on fruit so i'll, I'll go back here um forcing children to be vegetarian you know there's some issues there they'll talk about i'll click on it just um seasoning for lentils hmm. this milk isn't vegan that's just kind of funny what babies and countries other eat so a lot of thinking going on here that's interesting talking with meat um talking about meat with preschoolers 
what is your go-to kid-friendly meal for those nights when you're exhausted? So right away, we notice a theme of, you know, some of them like have a question, but it's not like, is it safe? Are we going to die if we eat it? Oh my gosh. You know, like, it's just like, how can I do this a little bit better? And, you know, kid stuff. So um, I think it's interesting. And the overall tone is just a lot more upbeat. And so far, the people seem healthier as far as their questions. But that, again, that, that could just be me. <laughs> so, um, and I'll click on some of them here, you know, veggie burger recipe thread, that pregnant vegans, vegetarian mamas that might be looking into to see if we can get some dirt. Um, frugality vegetarian on a budget, which obviously vegetarian on a budget is easy, easier than going on a high meat diet on a budget. You can find lots of cheap fruits and veggies, um, higher fat, vegan soups. You know, again, nobody's going to die if they do this wrong, if they put their kombucha in the wrong pot or anything like that. Um, we got ethics issues. Oh, here we go. Vegan toddler losing weight. Let's see what they have to say. Again, just being totally real here, teaching vegan and veganism and acceptance. So some may say, you know, oh, you're teaching the kids, you know, the wrong thing. But again, if you're going to use that as an excuse, like, oh, you're perverting their minds and you're like brainwashing them. Well, so are you, especially if you're slipping in and being dishonest about what you're giving to your kid. If you're having to slip these pills in and hide the liver in their meals, like it's kind of dishonest. And so you couldn't really have anything to say about like vegan propaganda for kids you know, that sort of thing. So here we got a new vegan and then corn-free, gluten-free, dairy, no, non-dairy milk. So we'll take a closer look, okay? Okay, oh, I already looked at the vegan lunch idea. So forcing children to be vegetarians. Uh, hello, I've been vegetarian for over 11 years now. I started when I was pregnant with my second child. I have five children now. Whoa. Okay, let me see if I can scroll down. Sorry, I gotta use, they're gonna just use the touch thing. Um, I have five children now. All but my oldest, I had vegetarian for some time, anywhere from two to six years or more. Each child has gotten longer, two of them. The youngest sons are still vegetarian and the others are not. So recently, the six-year-old has been begging to eat meat as she sees her siblings and dad eat it. So, you know, they're delving into this question. Um, she's saying she wished she never kind of let her kids go non-vegetarian and yada, yada, yada. So we have some responses, um, and, you know, basically talking about how early is it to expose your child to factory farm videos or ideas, things like that. Um, they're just talking about the way that they do it with their cousins, hardcore vegan. Her child is five and she's raising him to be vegetarian, not necessarily vegan, never asked her why. Blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, just a lot of good people wanting to do good things. And when there's meat in the house for the dad, it does make sense to offer the choice. Blah, blah, blah. Get your kids to help with food prep. Very good friend is vegan. Her, her husband initially was it now once, now eats meat. In their home, they're pretty strict vegan. But, um outside the home, they're a little bit more flexible. So again, you're seeing these real people have solutions that are working for them. And it's not a strict necessarily, even you can be flexible with it if that works for your family, these things like this, and people are happy, you know, that's good. Um, so you get the idea. What babies in other countries eat? Out my curiosity, as I feed my almost eight-month-old for solids in addition to breast milk, they 95% plus intake is just mommy's milk. So they're just wondering, in Japan, what do those babies eat? I'm assuming tofu and rice. My kids hate rice cereal. I basically food process and puree up whatever I'm eating, and they love it. They even love Thai curry, not too spicy, but still. Getting some flack from concerned peeps, why I'm not traditionally wanting to give them right cereal and packaged stuff. I just think it's so bland and boring, and they really love what I'm eating. Thai, Indian, Italian, exotic foods. So, actually, right away, there's a, a 
um, PDF from the WHO on the subject. Very fascinating. So it seems like there's more involvement in this um, in this wheel. 15 months old, love Indian food. Zimbabwe, the baby's exclusively breastfed for about a year. Then they start to eat corn porridge, badza with a bit of gravy, smashed pumpkin, and boiled root veggies. They don't eat greens for another six months until they have teeth to chew properly. In Europe, they pretty much eat everything, including tea, biscuits, pasta, etc., from a very young age. Also, they are given bones to gnaw on, which is kind of cool for teethers, but totally grosses me out. Yeah, me too. The baby food industry has a small but following a small but loyal following in Europe where most moms are working full-time to be able to afford to live there. Very few moms pump, but only get two to six months maternity leave. So many babies in kinder care need to eat both formula, breast milk, solid foods starting at about six months. So in Asia, she says, there's a lot of pre-chewing. So the mom and dad's pre-chew the food and then offer it to the baby. It begins with, the, it begins the digestive process as well as making food soft and manageable for the kids takes a while for the baby to begin to produce digestive, digest, digestive enzymes in their saliva. So another one that did not like rice cereal, my kids did fine on rice cereal. Um, this one saying they ate sweet potatoes and relish once a day for months, as well as blended foods like peas with breast milk or rice milk. So intuition should be your best guide, but you can look up Dr. Sears side as well as kellymom.com. So again, very informative. They're not just like, oh, um, I can't find any information about this, like the other forum that we talked about. So, um, I got a funny comment. Yes, in Asia, there is a lot of, oh, no, this one's questioning the pre chewing, saying in Singapore, at least, it is not common there. Some Asians might, but if you heard about a specific culture or person instead of all of Asia, that's what she thinks. DH, dear husband, says rice porridge is quite common. Mother-in-law gave her son lots of fruits, papaya, mango, fruit star, and bananas. So she's saying that's what people are eating in Asia. Um, giving to their babies. Yes, in Southeast Asia, rice porridge, kongi is generally baby's first food, at least in Hong Kong and China. I would also presume among Singaporeans and Malaysians of Chinese ancestry. Babies in uh, Argentina are encouraged to be breastfed for the first six months. Then soft fruits and root veggies. I mean, you think about it, it's the perfect foods to give to babies. The soft cucumbers, soft bananas, soft potatoes. I mean, it's great. Then you move on to pastas and rice and soups and stuff. Pretty typical. You can't you can find rice cereal, and I guess some babies like it, but I try not to give my food, my kids food that I wouldn't eat. I like food with spice and pizzazz and soda sea. So Taking the question, talking more about um, ethnic foods, wondering the same thing. I know there's a lot of variation between different European countries. And I love this because they're not just assuming that all the indigenous countries eat meat. They're actually wanting to, you know, see. So, and what the Japanese babies eat. We have a good link. I'm going to actually go ahead and click on that link. So about tofu right and then i'm just going to throw in a note here my kids love tofu they wouldn't even let me cook it they just ate it so soft and raw and my kids are extremely healthy they've never even been to the hospital they've never been sick more than a day in their lives and heal themselves their bodies heal themselves without any um, medicines and really um not a, even a lot of supplements so um, um where in europe she's um one is testing what the other one says. We don't give our baby tea or biscuits. We might give them rice cakes, but not sugary biscuits. Babies used to have rusks when they were teething, but I haven't heard of that in a long time. Pasta, maybe. Also, chewing on bones. No, that's dogs, not babies. I cannot honestly think of anywhere in Europe that I know of where kids are chewing on bones. <laughs> We generally wean according to the world health guidelines about six months. My understanding is that Europeans tend to wean on the late side compared to Americans, but who knows? My kids love tofu as small babies. They won't eat it now, but as babies, they love it. Germany, chamomile tea from a very young age. I found this out when I, when I was complete, completing a nutritional questionnaire at my, DS, at my dear son's baby wellness visit, asking how much tea. <laughs> they do. Some of them do. 
British biscuits, Americans call them cookies or biscuits. So they're just talking about biscuits. Okay, well, I'm getting a little bit too in depth with this one. So you get the point. Um, so and that just backs up everything that I've ever, ever read and researched about what babies are eating, which I've done some videos on that if you want to check out those videos. I'm definitely contesting uh, probably raw milk and just the, oh i have some videos on not to give raw milk to your babies and then i have another video on giving meat on how meat is unhealthy so those would be similar things if you're interested in that sort of thing so um what is this thread we're talking about talking about meat with preschoolers you know do you get them a choice what about grandma and grandpa I think you should give your child all the information you see fit and feed her at home what you serve. I think it's important to let the child make their own choice. If they want to eat meat at a party with grandpa, that's for her to decide. I don't or drunk in my house, but the kids will always make their own choices outside my home. That's what I do. And again, I mean, what a logical comment. What a, what a logical way to live. And um, so book, um, a book response, book idea you know, lux, that sort of thing, what um, different people are doing. Don't label yourself as a vegetarian because they don't eat fish. Um, okay, so let's move on. What is your go-to meal idea when you're exhausted? Me and my kids are fairly newly to vegetarianism. Not completely vegan, but I'm trying to cut back on dairy as much as possible for health reasons. Not a huge egg fan to begin with. So what is your favorite kid, you know, kid pleasing cheat meal for when you just want to pour a bowl of cereal instead of cooking? So when I feel the energy response, number one, I try to make something um, more, try to make more. So I always have more in the freezer. So the other day there was, my family was so hungry. We were out all day. And when I opened my freezer, there was pineapple pizza. So that's awesome. Frozen noodles, four minutes, you know, on the stovetop, the best. Um, beans and toast, you know, so very easy. A lot of responses, a lot of ideas, um, you know, vegan stoners website, lots of easy recipes that are quick to throw together. Um, veggie crumbles and pasta, good ideas, more ideas, all this tasty food stuff that is palatable. It's making me hungry thinking about it. Tamari, peanut butter, apple cider vinegar, you know, cucumbers. Oh, I could just eat another one that says yes, vegan stoner, check it out. Okay, so again, lots of ideas, lots of people in real life. I mean, this is scrolling down. I'm still scrolling down. I'm not going to read them all, but go check it out yourself. Makes me hungry just looking at it. Okay, so just search finding your tribe. This is pregnancy, you know, so are there any other pregnancy? Um, before I found out I was pregnant, I decided this time. This one's been pregnant her whole pregnancy, pregnant for, or was vegan for a year and a half before she got pregnant and vegetarian two years before that. All I craved during the first trimester was real cheese, did pretty good for a while, but then gave in, decided just to stick with being vegetarian and try to avoid eating too much dairy. Just do what works best for you. So again, a little flexibility is okay. I'd certainly rather err on this side than the dangerous side of, you know, a diet that is super, you know, like make a little, you know, errors in my diet, you know, be a little bit flexible rather than just, I don't know. So, um, 34 weeks just became vegetarian during this pregnancy. So awesome. We're having a lot of ideas. A lot of what she ate sounds great. Check it out for yourself. Um, I am pregnant I'm following a vegan diet, especially the McDougal plan. Okay, I am having some nausea and haven't been eating as healthy as I would, but I haven't touched animal products and I don't plan to. I believe that they're unhealthy and I'm not willing to expose myself or my baby to them. Your choice, your body, blah, blah, blah. Vegetarian, always vegan, vegetarian, excuse me, on and off vegan, vegan always and feeling great. Then I get pregnant. My body knows when I'm feeling my best. Um... Veggie now, though, so she said vegan a day. So it seems like there are a lot of vegans maybe go back to vegetarianism when they're, we have another one. Yes, I'm vegan and pregnant with number two. Just came out of a totally vegan pregnancy with huge success. This is awesome. 
it was my first, so I don't have anything to compare it to, but I felt great the whole way through. I love it. This makes me so happy. I'd been vegan for a year or two. I can't remember before pregnancy, so I was determined not to waver, and I think I did eggs once in a while, though. So, you know, again, gosh, what's up? What's up with all that vegan extremism you hear? They sound like a bunch of logical people who are using their intuition and listening to their bodies with great success. So, um, that's awesome. Never had a craving unless you count the flirt vicious thoughts of eggs or much heartburn even at all. Um, once or twice at the end, if I went to bed after eating a huge meal, I gained maybe 15 pounds during the whole pregnancy. In fact, I think I lost all of the birth weight that very day and another five pounds the day after. No hemorrhoids, no stretch marks. I totally attribute my great fortune to my vegan diet. Fuck yeah. So I'd say go for it. It'll help you feel great throughout your pregnancy, not to mention provide the best for you and your baby without the yucky stuff. So hell yeah. Another one, vegan and had a vegan pregnancy, baby girl's eight weeks old, um, ideas on what, what she ate. And this one, it's funny because these were her cravings. Her cravings were nutritional yeast on her foods, quinoa, baked sweet potatoes with melty earth balance, lemon water, and watermelon. Her biggest cravings as a vegan. Awesome. So another one. Um, vegan more than lacto vegetarian for more than 15 years with vegan phases at the end of her pregnancy has struggled a little bit getting iron protein. So she thinks protein bars, blah, blah, blah. So didn't restrict myself Went went with some more dairy. You can cook. I haven't been able to cook due to nausea. So I rely on a lot of man-made foods. Yeah, that would suck. Um, so reviving this thread, I had a miscarriage with the pregnancy I originally posted about, but got pregnant immediately after, and I'm currently 18 weeks pregnant. So this is the original poster. Having a really hard time eating healthy, slipped up and eaten meat a few times. I, I'd really love to get back to a mostly vegan, healthful diet. I made, I'm, I made yesterday an awesome black bean chili, added butternut squash and quinoa to it, and poured it over a sweet potato. Tonight was corn nuggets. We used to eat those too, and kid and fries at the kid's request, but at least I had a leafy salad with beef roast roast beets too. Any biggest cravings or food recipes, please feel free to share. More pregnant veggies, trying to revive, trying to conceive veggie. Veg burritos, biggest thing I'm eating. I mean, the list goes on. I'm still going. We're barely halfway over the page. A lot of soup recipes. Ooh, soup. That sounds amazing. It's actually a little bit cool for summer um, day. So soup might be a good idea. So on to the next thread. A frugality, vegetarian diet. Three kids. Um without using soy alternatives. Am I totally crazy? We don't have the dietary restrictions. For making the diet as inexpensive as possible would be the same for any diet. Stick to whole foods. A lot of responses. Post-punk kitchen, fat-free vegan. Um, a lot of Indian recipes. Avoid the breads, carbon flours. Honey baked lentils. Okay, so a lot of vegans, a lot of vegetarian stuff, not necessarily vegan. Vegan toddler losing weight. Okay, didn't skip that one. We come to this thread often. Skim it. Husband and I are vegan, so is our 15 month old daughter. We do 98% vegan because I do get lazy around some pastries. And started eating yogurt while I was pregnant. My husband has been vegan for nearly 20 years and will never be anything but. I spent most of my life eating meat and animal products and went vegan. A year after meeting him nearly eight years ago. I'm vegan only for ethical reasons. I don't think animal products are nutritionally evil, but my heart aches for animals. And yet I have this underlying anxiety about my daughter not getting everything she needs from what we eat. So not terribly anti-soy, but doesn't want to just load her up on that. Um, so Bright, happy, healthy, super social, total sweetheart looks healthy to me. She's cruising, but not walking on her own. 
15 months. That's still totally normal. Had evaluated by a physical therapist at 12 months because she still wasn't pulling up or taking steps. PT said she was fine and offered us suggestions to help get her moving more. We implemented them all and she's made great strides with her gross motor development. Her fine motor skills are fine. She feeds herself, plays with brainless blocks, no problem, etc. Said she'd take up his heart. 15 month visit and she's lost more than a pound and her head circumference was exactly the same to his credit our pediatrician was very non-alarmist about this he said to give her some milk cheese and yogurt that this weight slump is common in breastfeeding toddlers he didn't suggest i stop nursing but he did say she needed cow's milk in addition to soy milk he said he wasn't worried but that we should do a weight check-in in in a month and a half or and go from there he mentioned pediasure i really don't want to give her that crap but whatever it takes even if temporary he knows we're at least vegetarian but when we broached veganism with him when she was a newborn he was less sure of that it's my fault he thinks she's only vegetarian i just don't want to get into it with him since her growth development has always been fine i didn't really think it was a discussion worth having okay i'm now worried and i feel sick that i haven't given my beloved child the best start of course my husband thinks she's fine and i'm overreacting we've got to get at least some cheese and eggs into this girl. She's basically, she's not a picky eater, but honestly, I struggle with coming up a variety of things to feed her daily. And I feel like basically she eats oatmeal, tofu, and beans and grains every day. How about a variety of fruits? Hello. I'm not a super cook and I'm honestly very tired most days, but I'm just out of ideas. I'm about to go buy whole cow smoking. Give my kid a leg of lamb if that's what it takes to help keep her healthy and thriving. But my heart is vegan. I want to know if you've experienced this and how you've done. Let's see if this is common. I know avocados and coconut oil, I'm on it, but what else? How can I do this? I really appreciate your actual experiences. Again, so common sense, like and smart with vegan toddler weight loss. Thank you for helping me with the freak out I'm having. Okay. So this is something, oh, all the anti-vegan people would be all over. So I don't know how much about how much a toddler should eat, but when I was vegan in high school and lacked a lot of nutrients when I first started out, I understand your hesitation to give your daughter cow's milk. It's not really as healthy as people think it make it out to be. It sounds like your doctor is trying to suggest a higher fat diet. She's likely not getting with beans and grains. Doesn't mean she's not perfectly healthy. Those are great for her, but incorporate more vegan fats such as walnuts, avocados, canola oil, coconut oil, etc. If you can start making high fat vegan recipes, many so so many online that way she's getting variety of these things and you can control exactly what they are it's tough with toddlers because they can't supplement like adults when we lack specific nutrients so some vegan response there cow's milk is not needed you can give her flax goal the oat goal go almond milk i would give her health health fats i breastfed all of my kids and they never has cow's milk sorry my mistakes my two-year-old is all over me (laughs) she's nursing at the keyboard Burritos and nachos, that makes me gain weight. Personally, I would not do cow's milk, but if you were not opposed, I would maybe add yogurt to her diet. Super pro, super powered proteins, if she, powered smoothies, excuse me, if she will drink them. We do fruit, almond milk, a scoop of nut butter, banana, frozen fruit, bee pollen, acidophilus, sometimes yogurt, chia seeds, sometimes kale, etc. It's great that your doctor's relaxed. Not gaining is no big deal, but losing would worry me a little. Has her iron been tested? Do you think any nutritional could be going on? Does she take any supplements? So a lot of ideas, a lot of safeguards, a lot of questions. Again, even this is fine. It's not like, oh, I could poison my kid or is my kid being poisoned or something like that. Like, should I feed my kid this kombucha, which there's never been any studies, you know? So sort of thing raising my baby vegan except for eggs how to talk to her teaching vegan acceptance just uh, not very many responses on that one Been vegetarian for many years now i'm going vegan how to do it on a budget um monthly food budget great you're going vegan i am vegan and on a budget buying beans rice and pasta in bulk really helps tofu is not expensive either peanut butter if you're not allergic um Hard to afford fruits and vegetables on a deeply restricted diet, but there is a problem for omnivores too. I think if you avoid pricey substitute foods, focus on cheaper whole foods, it's totally doable. With the seasons, don't buy fresh tomatoes in February, for example. Eat beans, split peas, lentils, whole grains, pastas, rice, oatmeal, again, seasonal. And so this is the last one actually is gluten free, corn free. Um, just discovered a corn allergy so this is something you know just a lot of responses here 
very ghanaian free dairy free people that know what they're talking about soy delicious like that brand as well careful with rice dream processed with barley despite being gluten-free has made some people sick so this is information that is actually really hard to find so you can tell these people are doing their um their homework and they're even talking about so delicious you know unsweetened coconut milk has carignan um different things like that so lots of really smart people i just love this little comparison and you know let's stop there if you actually, and I'll, I'll just do this right now where I'm here, um, go to Google, okay, and type in like paleo fitness and see what your results are. See how many results. You get 11 million results. And then look up vegan fitness. And we have about 29 million results. So over double the results. You can do the same with fitness model. Um, when you do that vegan fitness model search, you get about 1 million, no, 1 billion results, vegan fitness model, and um, some right away people that are actually professionals. And then you can look up like paleo fitness model or like Weston A. Price fitness model and see what you get from that. For paleo, there's only about 756,000. If you're doing Weston A. Price fitness model, oh, you actually get a little bit more. It's actually 90, 950,000. So still incomparable to the billion results you get. So that's always fun to do. You can look it up on Instagram. It's the same thing. Um, you can look up the people who are doing it. You can look up the authors. You can look up the proponents, the leading people, Sally Fallon, Lauren Cordain, those types of people. And, you know, the elderly people who are doing this, you know, who've been eating meat and the traditional, you know, lifestyle, they still age. You know, they, they look like a normal standard American, honestly, to me. But you take like, Mimi Kirk, who does a mostly raw vegan diet, or Annette Horton, or Jim Morris, you know, you have elderly vegan people with amazing bodies that you just don't see. So use your own common sense, you know, look around, go to the Weston A. Price Facebook page and check out all the people who are actually doing this page. And if they're really backing up their supposedly healthy lifestyle, you know, with reality. So uh, it's been fun chatting with you guys. I'm going to go hang out with my kids and my dog, have some fun on this beautiful evening. We have a whole day free. I'm really excited. So um, I hope that you guys are having a great day too. And I hope that you guys are going to be eating some fruit. And I hope that you can be blessed like I've been blessed today with some random little surprises and goodness. And don't forget, always um, pay it forward too. So take care, fruit bats. See you later.